Here's a look at some of the products I'll be using today. And this is a large stamp set called Summer Fruit Tiles. And this is a six by six panel stamp with different pieces that you can stamp in different colors. There are greetings, but there is also the Summer Fruit Tiles masks. And what this allows you to do is isolate and color different parts of the stencil, which is going to make it fun to make a multicolored pattern. And then you can pretty much do anything with it. I am going to use one of my CZ Design Bad Days Good Vibes stamps, haven't decided what yet, to make an encouragement card. And I thought that this happy fruit would be really nice. I'll stamp this in black first, then I'll pick some pretty happy colors to stencil on. So let's get started with stamping. I'm using my full size Misty today and I have my little waffle flower grip mat in here to hold my piece in place. And I'm just going to basically, you know what, I'm gonna go up at the top here because I'm not gonna be using this whole panel of fruit. I'm going to be cropping it down a little so you could do this on even a, a larger piece or a smaller piece. That's up to you. What I'm going to do now is just give all this image a little wipe down because it's brand new stamp, right? And they have a coating from the manufacturing process. You can also use, I recently picked up these stamp conditioning erasers and they're nice because they do the work for you as well and they don't leave any residue behind. It's just to prime your big stamps. So many of the times that I'm sharing videos here on my channel, I am using new products and that's why you see me do so much priming, but it makes a difference. It makes a difference in how it takes the ink. I am going to stamp this in black and I'm going to use Gina K Designs Black Onyx. I'll just work my way around this stamp, get it inked up, and I'll probably stamp this a few times. The lines are actually pretty delicate, which is nice. And I don't know yet if I want to be pressing down too hard, but I do want to get that first coating. All right, we're going to bring this down. And oh, I see already some areas that I didn't take the ink that well. And that's what happens with a brand new stamp. So we are just going to do round one and see how this transferred. All right, let's push. And that's the beautiful thing about having a Misty is that you can keep stamping in the areas that you didn't get, retransfer your ink. Oh, that's coming to, coming together beautifully already. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna focus more. We're gonna do a little more down here. And that's what we're doing. All right, that stamped beautifully. So now I am going to clean this up and then get ready to pick some colors for ink blending. So I've got a little quad of some of my favorite combination of colors here. And what I'm going to do is try to keep this a little light as I go, because I'm not really sure exactly how it's gonna look, but I am gonna take each color family of my brush here. I keep this paper towel under my desk and uh, it's great for priming and cleaning your brush in between colors. I only use one brush per color family. I mix company inks, but I, I don't use these for oxides or pigment inks. I just use these set of brushes that I have for dye inks or water-based inks. But I'll prime the brushes each time. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna put on a little bit of music. I'm going to take my first little color here and I'm gonna stick this right to the top of the pad for now. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not sure how this is gonna work with the stencil. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see now how you section it off, right? Get it, get it lined up once you've got it can stick that down. Now I can also take post-it notes just to cover up the other openings in case I get a little aggressive with my colors. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I am gonna go ahead and start ink blending, speed this up, and you can watch this all come together.
And that's the finished panel. So this is just one way, four colors, mostly no two colors touched until I got to the green and that's fine because I may end up putting my greeting there. But I'm gonna set this aside and now I'm gonna work on a greeting before I decide how to trim this piece down. I went ahead off camera and I stamped both It's Okay and the Some Days Suck greeting on some black cardstock in Boston White. And I think either of these could be really nice. And here's what I'm thinking. Wherever I crop, I'm gonna cover up that one green that touches the green. Cause I just like the idea that they don't touch, right? But here you could do It's Okay too. And I actually really love the shape of that. Either would work. I think this is kind of cool. And now comes the fun part. I, I have this uh, set of sentiment strips. So I think I'm gonna do the It's Okay to not be okay, right? Because I think, I think that's a sweet, I think that's a sweet sentiment. And, or it could be any of these little sub sentiments, right? You could do any that you wanted, but I am going to take a dive to give myself the ability to crop. Now this one here is the three and a half by four and three quarters. And I think this will be nice as long as I get a little bit of all the pattern. Now this is definitely gonna be, or maybe I come down more like that. Ooh, I kind of like that because I, I like the idea that this is going to cut off lines and we're just going to take that bit of the pattern. That's it. And let's make sure this is nicely centered so that it's okay. Hits right where I want it to be. I'm visualizing side to side. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but I am going to tape this into place and cut this panel. So this is the fun part about taking a six by six image, right? Cutting it however you want for whatever card design you're going to create. You don't have to use it all. You don't have to line it up perfectly, although you could, you know, you could do this in several different ways. This is what I'm gonna do. Let me cut that out so that I can, and then I'm also gonna cut out the little sentiment greeting and then we'll prepare the finished card. I also cut a matte layer here and actually I'm gonna, I had something on my die, so I'm gonna scrape that off. If you ever get anything on from a previous die cut, just have a sand eraser handy, they're really great. But I'm gonna glue this on so that this can have a really fine, let's see if you can see it there, uh, matte black layer. Okay, I will get that glued together here and set that aside. So here I have additional layers and A2 layers. These are probably my most indispensable dies, as are my Simon Says Stamp sentiment labels. These are great. I've had these for seven years. I use them probably, well, as much as any other thing in my craft room, but they're really nice because they can cut apart. You can foil them if you like. I, I rarely do. I just like the look of the black background and the white type that is called a reverse which is why we call them the reverse bad day or reverse is in the title <laughs> i'm not really speaking Let me speak pretty one day okay i'm going to take this one and i always keep them in these little pockets because then when you cut them apart you can just keep it all together in pockets and they stay together nicely. All right, so we're gonna say to not be okay. You center it right on the greeting like that. And then I will run that through to cut that out. Alrighty, then I'm going to use my little, I love this magnet because it lets me pick the dies up right off the, uh, the magnetic mat. And we have this greeting. So I will trim this to size. These little friends will go right back into the pocket. You can also just cut these out by hand with a paper trimmer, but you know, I'm never, I'm never good at it. So I use the dies. It kind of takes the guesswork out. And I love that. <laughs> I love that in crafting. I like to hedge my bets. So I will just trim this little friend off. I'm gonna put the letter right over where that little nubby thing is and cut flip it and repeat that same spacing on the other side and cut 
and now I have a nice little greeting. I will color the sides in really quickly with a dark colored alcohol marker so that it looks like it is black cardstock all the way through. And this marker is my Copic T10. And all I'm gonna do here is just go over the sides to cover up that white core cardstock that these are printed on. It just looks nicer and more finished. It's just a habit. It's a hard habit to break. And the alcohol ink dries and doesn't smear on your hands. So there we go, got you colored in. And I will put some type of foam square on the back so this can have some dimension as well. So I've got a piece of Nina Classic Crest in the solar white, and this is the new Simon scoreboard. And actually, let me get this off. I, this is basically five and a half is the biggest score that I can make on here for a top folding card, which is fine because that's the most that I make. But what I like about this is it goes off first. So you're getting all of the the edges, right? You don't have to worry about pulling it down because the groove starts off the actual board and then you pull down. I actually think that's kind of cool. Like that, okay. Now, pop you back on. And you can also use your Teflon bone folder. I just, I don't know, I like the scoring tools that come with scoreboards because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they're, <laughs> they do their job. But this I like because it gives that press and it doesn't add any extra sheen to where you're pressing and folding and oh, it's beautiful. All right, so there's my card base. I'm gonna flip it over, stamp my little greeting. Who made it, just in case anyone forgets, it's me. All right, let's zoom in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of tape to hold it closed and here the thing that's kind of cool about this is you you could also do like extra color but you could have a field day i'm not much of a copic colorer but i'm sure people are going to make some really beautiful sample cards with this so you know be sure to check out the product page uh, for this particular stamp set because you'll see different ideas and see what other people have dreamed up with it so Gonna pop this down. I think this is very fresh. Get it? Fresh fruit, pun intended. And there we go. But again, this has become now much more of an abstract pattern for my card project. You know, you're not necessarily looking at it right away and saying, yep, nope, that's fruit. But here, I am gonna make sure that this is a little lower on the card and then I'm going to pop this right underneath. But first I wanna get this down because I think I will, I might just glue that right onto the note card to have that visual separation or I could use thin foam squares too. It's always nice to have a couple different depths because then you, you know, you know, uh, you know, oops, very sticky. You know where your layers are going and how high one is versus the other. All right, a little bead of the liquid glue. Did I even take that one off? Yes, I did. And then we will hover so that we can see. That's why we like, we, we like uh, tweezers because they, it gives us the ability to say, my fingers are out of the way and I can clearly see my placement, right? All right, pop that down, that looks pretty straight. And here, I mean actually, because I kind of want it to be just right under there, because I want it to be just a little bit tucked under, but at the same time, um, I'm just gonna put little beads of glue on the back here, because that will be enough. I want it to be as centered as it can be on the card. So, well, you know what, I'm gonna hold it from the side and just come right here so that we are mostly centered, but that we can still read that greeting. Oh, we just slipped, that's okay. I wanna make sure that looks straight, coming up just a bit so that it is nestled in like that. Oh, I think that's, oh, we're sliding still. That's what happens with the liquid glue. You gotta give it a second. I like that card, look at that. 
And now we could add some embellishments as well. Let me take a look and see what I have that might be cute. I actually think it'd be cute to put some enamel dots on here. And I have these black and white enamel dots that are self-adhesive from Spellbinders that I have not used. I like to try to save the package. So that's how I kind of keep them organized. But here I could just do three and I would do black because I feel like because of the black, and let me pop one right here. You know, I could do like one here, just let go. They can come up really easily if I don't like the way they look. That's a boop. It's a little different. Maybe take one. I like to pop them right on the edge of my craft pick. And then I should I do a smaller one up here? I think so. I don't think I want to have a bigger one. I just wanted to have three. Just three to create a little connection around the greeting. Like that. I actually think that's really cute. You know what? I'm doing it. We're pressing, we're committing, and that is my finished card project for today. So I took this really fun fruit pattern, the stencil that allows you to isolate and blend your colors. And also, you know, you can color, you can go to town on that if you wanted to, but then I turned it into a nice encouragement card to remind a friend that it is okay to not be okay. Everything is not sunshine and roses, although we appreciate those days when they're there. We know that in reality, it's not always the case. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box, and I'll also have a blog post with more details and information. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you, so please hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.